Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to the press conference. I'd like to give the floor to the chair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming here um, at our press conference, which will be held from 3 until 4 p.m. Uh, at today's uh, electrical meeting, we, supported, uh, we submitted our report um, numbered 68A, covering chapters 1, 2, and 4. Uh, well, in July last year, we submitted our report number 68, but then we had to follow up on a number of issues, and that's why this part of the report has been postponed, and that's why we call it Report 68A. At today's meeting, we have already uh, submitted uh, two reports, first of all, concerning the uh, administration's support um, and monitoring of charities. And then for Chapter 4, there's about uh, the monitoring of district councils in relation to their district work. I would like to introduce to you um, the various uh, members who are in charge of the um, chapters. First of all, uh, Ms. Tanya Chen, and then uh, Ms. Ho, Mr. Ho, but then he's otherwise engaged, and uh, we have invited Mr. Lam um, to stand in for Mr. Ho. So the two of them will take charge of the um, questions. And then in July, we submitted a report, but we didn't call a press conference, and that's in relation to Chapter 2, and that's about charitable fundraising activities. Mr. Kenneth Fleung uh, has been responsible um, for the questions concerning Chapter 2. So I'll give the floor to each of them so that they will be walking us through the various um, chapters. Yes, thank you. I think for Chapter 1, relatively speaking, it is a bit complicated. If I may set out the background for you. Well, um, in recent years, uh, we have seen um, the emergence of a greater number of tax-exempt uh, organizations. Um, instead of 4,000 plus in the year 2006, it was increased by 100% um, to uh, go up to almost 9,000 in 2016. And then um, for the tax-exempt uh, donations, uh, again, it has grown rapidly uh, from $5.2 billion to um, $11.8 billion. For the uh, tax uh, it foregone, it has been $1.5 billion. Well, regarding the tax exempt uh, status of such organizations, uh, are they appropriate? Have they been uh, properly monitored? I think it has to do uh, with the revenue of the public coffers. And in fact, the Audit Commission has come up with a report concerning this matter. As the Chair has said, for Chapters 1 and 2, both of them are about charitable organizations. It isn't so much that we are pinpointing the services provided by the uh, charities, but then to a certain extent, um, we believe that um, there has been some areas of um, um, dissatisfaction. Um, and in fact, uh, the Law Reform Commission, in relation to the system as a whole, in particular the regulation, has come up with certain uh, recommendations. In the year 2011 to 2013, a report has been prepared, recommendations have been made. The Relevant Policy Bureau was the Home Affairs Bureau. In a moment, I will uh, briefly talk about this point. Yes. Um, uh, the main point is about the work of the Inner Revenue Department, but then other uh, bureaus are also concerned. 
like the Food and、um, Health Bureau, as well as the Home Affairs Bureau, the Lands Department,、um, the Education Bureau, and even the Police、uh, would be involved. And that's why we have taken so long to prepare this report. I have got a lot of bundles in my ward office. I'm grateful to the Secretariat for the hard work. A lot of meetings have been held.、Uh, please briefly talk about the LRC's report, and then、uh, we will also. Give the floor to other members.、Uh, we do have a lengthy report today. Now, for the Law Reform Commission in the year 2011, there was extensive consultation. If I remember correctly, there were two rounds of consultation. Uh, it was in December 2013 that they issued a report, and in fact, the administration has,、uh, in advance,、uh, said that、um, the Home Affairs should be the bureau to follow up on the recommendations. I've said that many departments and bureaus are、uh, are involved, but then for the HAB, I think they have got five cardinal sins. First of all, they didn't take the LRC's report、uh, seriously. Well, there were just、uh, two few meetings following this up. In fact, the CS4A had、uh, specified the HAB for following up on this matter. So,、um, the HAB didn't take the LRC's report、uh, seriously. Neither did it take the CS、uh, um, decision、uh, seriously. Well, three years have passed. HAB was supposed to coordinate among the departments and bureaus. Well, it was said that nine bureaus, nine departments were involved in the work of、uh, monitoring the charities. End of 2013,、um, the report was issued in January 2014. Internal consultation was commenced, and then、um, uh, views were collected. But unfortunately, so far only three interdepartmental meetings were held in a span of three years. The first one.、Um, 11th of August 2015. So more than a year after the issuance of the report, and only、um, nine bureaus and departments were involved. And then there was a meeting on a yearly basis, like October 2016. There was one such interdepartmental、uh, meeting. And then 20th of June 2017, another meeting. Uh, the other three、uh, departments were involved, like the SWD, the HAD, as well as the FHD. <coughs> That is the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department, and this only about monitoring of charities, rather than、uh, charities as a whole. In other words,、uh, the scope of the discussion is much narrower than that discussed by the LRC. As to the status quo, I think、um, in the past many departments were、um, approached, and departments merely gave certain comments, and they have yet to come to their concluding views. This is、uh, unimaginable. So for the PC, we found this totally unacceptable, and we urge the HAB to、uh, expedite the consultation with the relevant bureaus and departments. Eighteen、uh, recommendations have come up, and thirteen、uh, recommendations are about、uh, ways to improve the governance, etc. Therefore,、uh, the explanation was that as nine bureaus and the And other departments、uh, would be involved. It will be very difficult for them to come to a consolidated view. This is because if a reform is needed, then it would、um, affect many、uh, charitable organisations.、Uh, this we do understand, and we try to find out about the facts. And today we are presenting this report. We have tabled the report、uh, at the legal meeting this morning. Uh, if I may also cover the points about、uh, taxation, yes, I will have a brief word, and then、uh, the vice chair will supplement. Well, for the Indian Revenue Ordinance, well, of course, the IRD has got guidelines and manuals、uh, to tell you how you can become、uh, a tax exempt organisation, and we call it Section 88 of the IRO、uh, organisations. You can go online to check it out.、Uh, I would say that、um, you can become. Such an organisation, but then there is、uh, no way that your name will be taken out. Well,、uh, you stand a chance of getting the status, but then for the status to be revoked,、uh, it will be extremely difficult. And probably、um, this is an area that we need more monitoring. 
This is because um, for the um, charities, uh, there are certain uh, issues uh, which involve uh, serious uh, problems of monitoring. I hope that the Department of Justice, as well as the um, financial uh, or the Treasury, should also clarify the powers and functions of the IRD. But then the IRD has always been relying on the uh, legal ex uh, advice given in year 2001. In other words, uh, a single breach should not be relied upon to revoke um, the charitable uh, status. We did try to ask the question many times, um, but then uh, things have uh, changed and there has been no uh, commitment as to whether there will be clarification about the powers and, and um, uh, authority. Well, in fact, the number of charities has grown by um, 100 percent, and then there have been certain commitments, say for example, directors should not get paid. I think this is a very important requirement. I think in simple terms, it means that if you want to get this tax exempt status, uh, you need to set it out in your M&A and you have to follow the requirements. But then there is no consequence uh, in the case of a breach. And for you to withdraw your status of being tax exempt, I think the ROD won't take the initiative to do so. I think it's quite clear that um, the ROD was not authorized. You only have the authority to decide which are the Section 88 uh, chair entities. However, for those companies who breached the in in intent to uh, for a refund, it was um, to uh, repeal their uh, tax exam status. Thus, Ms. Chani Chen said that um, the RD should proactively ask the two departments, one is the Department of Justice, another one being the Treasury, to resolve these issues because um, you have to involve a, a significant amount of tax receipts. Anything to add, Vice Chair? Next, on the uh, do with the Lands Department, and um, it's quite a stickling issue because, because as you all know, that a lot of charities not only enjoy tax exemptions, and they also um, they can um, obtain land cheaply from a concession or nil premium that could have been when uh, it has a stable revenue that could reduce the government subvention. However, uh, the Lands Department. When dealing with his private treaty grants, um, some of the very important provisions with what got to put in or not applied consistently. For example, um, direct directors, the directors could not be remunerated, or in some cases, um, they submitted their audited accounts to the relevant departments uh, for monitoring. And it's the in a specific request for in one case we we describe in detail that um the grantee N that um it, which is required to form a management committee so that the government departments and so on to get to know its financial performances and the uh, uh, beneficiary grantee has agreed to uh, reduce a uh, gradual uh, receiving less government subvention. However, there's another cardinal sin of the HAB. So before year 2000, the Social Welfare Department is the o oversaw uh, these, and after 2000, it would transfer to the HAD, which uh, there was about this uh, management and committee would list out in the uh, grant, land grant provision. However, the Social Welfare Department to, uh, had uh, not failed to attend meetings in 1998, and HADs, it was even worse. He stopped attending meetings since year 2000, that never attend the meetings until we uh, was discovered that uh, back in 2017, and uh, all resumed preparation of such meetings. This management committee is to comply with the uh, treaty conditions of which the uh, restaurants or catering facilities are not open to the public, but only open to members. Uh, uh, since 1998, these uh, catering facilities were open for the public. However, it was in uh, breach of the uh, lease provisions, and some uh, 
which have the profits derived would uh, spend on other projects that are uh, not matching the object of these charities. Of course, uh, the HAB had promised that we do uh, resume negotiations, and not only at the organization was invented and earlier, and I'll. Um, and have increased its invention about twofold. It is also one of the beneficiaries. It was a gradual as uh, reduction of invention. So not only it was not reduced, we actually have a our shop increase. So not only we said that one had failed um, to uh, convene the management committee meeting. So there was supposed a gradual reduction in invention, and all of a sudden there was a sharp jump and failed to reduce them to a very slight degree. Can you uh, explain that uh, you are uh, granting the land? Um, for uh, building a car park or a hotel on top, so that they could be a, on a self-financing basis, and after a few years, and so that um, the government subvention could be as um, allocated elsewhere. So it government uh, failed to uh, attend the meetings and um, comply and uphold the breach and continue to provide the subvention. So it's a waste of resources. Not that they were incorrect. However, this is not how it's written in the lease provision. So um, there's some issues with the monitoring here. So on the catering facilities, as the chairman have said, some issues. And this organization have also applied for a permission from the town planning board. So we're given a provisional permission for a permission, provisional uh, restaurant. However, it's still unsatisfactory. However, since 1996, the restaurant have been operating, so it um, made um, quite a huge profit that is open to the public. So this is um, contravening the land lease provisions. However, they've never been enforced it and not dealt with until when I applied for pension for TVB, um, the situation was then rectified. So that was the fourth cardinal sin of the HAB. And the fifth one was the Chinese Temple Committee. So the Chinese Com Temple Cardinals is a very old legislation in Hong Kong. In 2015, there was a review of the CTO. However, uh, it's been dragged on for so long and yet to fail to come with a report. So I've been chasing it up for years. And the PAC has expressed strong dis uh, dissatisfaction and disappointment. I hope that it can uh, as addressed as soon as possible. So the Chinese Temple Committee have two types of temples. One is the registered temple. According to the uh, provisions, the government had great powers to uh, monitor its books. However, the registered ones, they are on relaxed relaxed conditions. So in this management, there are a lot of problems. And this time in the, the Chinese Temple Committee, <coughs> so that we have some delegated um, agreement, and, and usually the HAD have been very tardy in its management. And as one of the uh, temple have yet to come up with a new delegation agreement in after ten years. So that I have counted fifth cardinal sin HAB, and one of which will be a responsible, uh, responsible by Mr. Lau Kong Wa. And frankly speaking, they have the inconsistency in their testimony. So in a, a hearing of the PAC, so uh, can I pass it to Mr. Justin Lam? So I will let one finish speaking before another. So I also I'll, I'll have to finish my section first. So later on, Mr. Justin Lam will give his account because we pointed out, as was a personal opinion, that, that um he just um the secretary of bluff. So um. There's put him back up his evidence. I just amend his testimony next time. So um, he have to admit that he um he has misspoken. So as for how involved quite a lot of departments, and some departments have immediately rectified and not much issues arisen. For example, the police, because um uh, registration a uh, complicated matters have the societies registration, and uh, what the EDB's role, uh, the um the, the um, I, EDB, IMC. So they are registered at charities. So um, so we have a quite a complicated chapter. However, overall speaking, and uh, we are uh, expressed uh, strong dissatisfaction of the condition of several departments and poor, especially their progress. But let me speak more on lands department, because the lands department is managing a lot of land leases.
there was this problem that is whether it should be the lens department that should follow up on the lease conditions or the uh, policy bureau. Sometimes uh, there is a misunderstanding and things fall uh, through the gap. Uh, some guidelines have been issued, but the grey area still exists. So we urge the lens department to clarify the grey area. Um, well, um, Miss Ling. Um, who has become the permanent secretary? She used to be the director of lands. Um, well, we know that um, uh, special cases and also cases involving new premium uh, will have their land use uh, being sort of uh, followed up. Thank you, Tanya, uh, Mr. Lam. Uh, please uh, talk about um, Chapter Four. Uh, that is the community involvement projects of the district councils. Thank you, Chair. Just now, uh, Ms. Tanya Chen referred to the case of Mr. Lau Kong Hua, the Secretary for Home Affairs. Uh, please turn to pages 73 and 74. Uh, the last uh, paragraph on page 73, and also the second as well as the third paragraphs of uh, page 74. Well, um, let me talk about page 74 in the Chinese uh, version. Uh, we did ask Mr. Lau Kong Hua during the hearing that, um, well, the Audit Commission had queried as to why um, a particular organization had not been followed up for as much as 10 years. At the time, Mr. Lau Kong Hua, the secretary, insisted that the relevant government departments had been following up on the particular case. On the spot, we asked the Audit Commission to clarify. The Commissioner said that his understanding was different. <laughs> well, there were two versions, and then we asked for further information at the following hearing. At the second hearing, according to information submitted, we found that for a solid of 10 years, uh, the Bureau had not carried out any following up. But then when the Secretary talked about following up, it was only done in year 2007, and then um, on the next time this was followed up was 2017. And we believe that uh, such a remark was most um, uh, disappointing, and we express our grave dissatisfaction. As the secretary, uh, he should have uh, come fully prepared and should come uh, with accurate information for us so that we can um, be assisted in our hearing uh, instead of just um, uh, giving an answer without any support. And in fact, uh, the way he understood the matter was very different from what a normal person would understand the matter. So we were uh, sort of um, gravely um, disappointed. On behalf of Mr. Stephen Hall, I would like to report on our views concerning the uh, provision of district council funds for community involvement projects. Uh, let me cover two points. First of all, uh, we would like to talk about the management of conflict of interest. Well, the PAC found that for this particular scheme, I think there are inadequacies in five areas. First of all, there has been no definition about other uh, decorable interests. On the other hand, there is no need to declare the connection between the relevant district council members and the implementation parties. Moreover, um, there is no provision to say that the chair should rule on the declaration of interests. Even though there has been a ruling, it hasn't been put on record. Moreover, for the uh, conflict of interest in working groups, there isn't any standing practice to manage and monitor the conflict of interests. Well, um, there is also a six point. Uh, for certain district councils, um, they have delegated some powers to the working groups to spend money. 
But in fact, uh, under the district council ordinance,、uh, they haven't been given such a power to delegate、uh, the function to their working groups. They can have it delegated to a committee, but they're not so for working groups because working group members may not necessarily be district council members. Thank you, Chair. So we've looked at such a scenario. We are gravely dissatisfied, and we find it unacceptable. Let me elaborate. First of all, when a district council member takes up his office, he has to declare interests. Say, for example, directorship of certain companies or being persons in charge of companies. So you need to come up with general declaration. When it comes to tier two declaration, that is at a meeting, if、uh, you have conflict of interest regarding a matter being discussed, you are required to make a declaration. In the past, as to what is meant by other declarable interests, there has been no clear definition, and it has resulted in certain controversies. In any event, for a public officer to vet、uh, the use or the application for public money, well, for a few over a few years' time, we are talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. You need to exercise care to prevent、uh, potential. And or real conflict of interest. Unfortunately, from the records that we have seen, the declaration that has been made、um, has been、uh, carried out in a、um, unsatisfactory manner.、Um, even if the chair has ruled on it, it hasn't been recorded. This is mostly most unacceptable. The public can only.、Um, Exercise a monitoring role and have it checked and balanced if it can be found on the record、uh, by looking at the、uh, possible conflict of interest. If there is no record, then the media and the public would not be able to monitor the conflict of interest. So, in relation to the use of public money, this is undesirable. As to my second point, there's about. The distribution and use of district council funds. Well, if you turn to page one hundred of our report, in the of the Chinese version, the、um, last paragraph, as you said, that on a yearly basis, the HAD will provide money for different kinds of activities. For the second last paragraph, it is said that in the year two thousand and fifteen sixteen, ten district councils. Uh, spend money earmarked for arts and culture on something else,、uh, ranging from two hundred twenty thousand dollars to over one million dollars.、Um, well, during the hearing,、uh, we did try to find out why this has happened. Well, in fact, in many cases, the relevant district councils might have the opinion that owing to one. Uh, reason or other, usually technical in nature, they have money unspent, and then the committees、um, thought that、uh, it's better to put the unspent money to good use, and so they have uh, uh, spent the money on something else. This is not desirable because the money was supposed to be spent on arts and culture. If you depart from the policy intention, there's no way that you should make use of the public money. You should rely on other resources to organise、uh, those other activities. And in fact, if there's money unspent, first of all, either you try again. To invite applications to see if some other organisations can、uh, host other arts and cultural activities, and in fact, when it comes to the selection of arts and cultural activities,、uh, a waiting list can be drawn up so that eligible applications、uh, can take up、um, the vacated places. Rather than giving a free hand to the district councils, so that they can spend the money on any other activities that they like, because、uh, it is an irresponsible way of spending public money. It also goes against the original policy intention. So regarding、um, uh, 
the use of district council funds for community involvement projects. That's more or less what we think. Go, go. You know, uh, Mr. Field, let Vice Chairman talk about Section 2 on fundraising activities and the monitoring. Even though this uh, <clears throat> chapter was complete, I had to submit a report on July by the PAC. However, we did not have a press con, so let me just uh, recap some of the major views in the report. So back in 2014, the Auditor General mentioned that the fundraising activities and what did the monitoring about 280 million, which is monitored. However, those outside the purview, which is a more staggering amount, which is about 110 Oh, $11 billion. So we, so we can see a few key challenges of phenomenon and yet to be addressed. As we all know, that different organizations have different fundraising activities. For example, flag selling, lottery, or uh, street selling. These t different type of fundraising activities by charities um, was um, governed by different departments, for example, social uh, HAD, uh, FBHD, so welfare department, and the lands department. So such a duplicated uh, monitoring that made a lot of uh, NGOs um, don't know where to go and led to a creation of loopholes as well. Besides the uh, charity fundraising, some of the fundraising, for example, uh, online fundraising, or even on uh, some of the uh, charities on the street will ask you for a, a direct debit authorization for a regular donation to charities. These sort of fundraising activities currently ha is not governed by any legislation or uh, regulations. Also, we point out a few problems. There's some of the fundraising activities, um, the high administration cost is excessively high, and uh, some of the guidelines should be in place and some raising fundraising activities would have required a uh, submit an audited uh, report and very often after the conclusion way after the deadline the organization have failed to submit the report auditor report and of course Ms. Chen Chen mentioned and an back in 2013 LRC report and, and, at, and asked for comprehensive suggestions on how to uh, overhaul the charity's monitoring regulatory regime, and LRC also asked that these activities should be an enhanced accountability to the public, and the transparency would need to be enhanced as well. And these are the um, main concerns of the report. So we now can take questions. Very complicated. So we've done a good job explaining, I guess. Commercial Radio Chen Yifei. So on charities, you mentioned that the 2013 LRC have uh, launched, uh, released a report about four years on. The HAB had not uh, come up with a official response. And um, the Secretary for Home Affairs mentioned that to set up a single regulatory agency, that some of the charities or the religious organizations will object to it, and also involve a lot of uh, major policy changes. For these uh, views, what is your opinion of this? Do they uh, legitimize the lack of response for the past four years? Second question on the uh, declaration interest on district councils. Would other members uh, will have follow up, act up action at the LegCo meeting? The first and one was answered by Ms. Chan. Our goal of open hearing and report is to follow up the documents. We hope to uh, uncover the objective facts um, to, to identify which department get it right, which department has room for improvement. Hopefully, in the future, these problems will not uh, repeat themselves. So this is the most um, important objective of this report. So what you said is the truth. Uh, we don't hope to um, 
over-regulate the charities. However, we need to have a reg regime in place. We can't do without it. How? I'll leave it to um, Ms. Chen. Or let's see who other members would like to speak as well. And for the single regulatory agency, we understand it's quite a complicated issue. However, that could not really um, justify why get only three meetings, and of which the progress is uh, extremely slow. I can also f uh, provide some further information, which is uh, listed in the audit report. However, on the second report, because the first and second report is re are relevant, the LRC back in 2013 December had uh, published a report in uh, May of 2016. So uh, two years on, the Department of Justice, the Secretary of Justice, had written to HAB to uh, and reported some company of charities members that in a uh, there's lack of progress on the implementation of LRC suggestions. So in June of 2016, the Welfare Panel Chairman have shared the same views. So I'm not asking for a um, uh, immediate. Um, implementation for it, but the lack of response is unacceptable. And um, the uh, Chief Secretary uh, um, directive is not uh, issued before the uh, hours after the report written on the and may, the Chief Secretary have also mentioned the uh, FJB to coordinate the different bureaus and departments' views. And to re uh, respond to the RC suggestions for the government's reference, so this is it was, it was, it has gone, gone nowhere, and hopefully we can uh, chase uh, something for the early follow-up that we hope to uh, 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 prevent um, irregularities for the charities for the L R C. We're not asking for a specific agency responsible. However, we hope we ha there have to be a reply because involve nine bureaus and departments. And for this, we uh, would not accept their explanation. It was back in 2014, April and June, that the reports have we pointed out their views. And only recently did they um, start, let's say, devote some time an effort into it. However, they cannot um, this that this regard RC and Let's Co's work and yet to reply. They can just say we don't do it. However, you still have to give a response instead of ignoring it. Any other questions? Anyone member like to speak? Paul Che? On Justin Lam, I would like to answer the second part of the question. From what I understand, the HAD um, has start um, attention to, to the uh, declar the declaration of issues and we amended the guidelines. My personal view is that I'd like to remind that um, people's involved in the uh, approval of public funding, they're public officers. When approving such a uh, funding application, when whether it's a public application and failed to declare the properly declared the interests or the interest involving their own organization, they could be in breach of um, duties, misconduct in public office. We cannot just um, um, uh, 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 collusion or a sweet uh, friend, uh, friendly organization or cronyism or a widow majority anyway, which can pass anyway to improving such applications. If so, it will be very dangerous. You might risk breaking the law for this. So we not see this from a political angle. So we just uh, look at it on a good governance point of view, which is and has no uh, a political chance. Which is right is right, is wrong is wrong. Oh, Mr. Shu, <coughs> uh, Chair. Yes, uh, I'm also a district council member. I've been so for 10 years, so I can speak from uh, experience, and I would also like to declare my interest. I think I can just sum up the matter in a very brief term. Rules. 
Well, uh, in some cases, the district councils don't have clear rules, and that's why well, we're presented with the various problems that have been identified. Say, for example, working groups. Can they be delegated the power to fit the funds? And uh, what about their declaration of interests? I think clearer, uh, um, more clearly drawn up uh, rules can go a long way uh, to resolve the problems. And then commenting on Mr. Lamb's point, I've been a district council member for 10 years. Uh, I think the rules are being tightened up. In the beginning, I think a uh, few people paid much attention to it. But of course, uh, from other district councils, uh, we've been told that uh, there are variations among the purchases. I think it's a matter of unifying the requirements. I believe that for the majority of the district council members, they are providing public service and they have taken part in uh, different uh, service organizations. Uh, the positions may be nominal only, but then we have to avoid giving the impression that there is conflict of interest. So I believe that the HAD and the district council secretariat should come up with uh, clearer guidelines. Well, I can say that for my, um, well, in fact, um, Sometimes uh, there may be um, the desire to avoid going against the wishes of the members. So I think clearer guidelines can remove the doubt. I would also like to turn to uh, page 105 of the Chinese version. And in fact, uh, currently uh, there are doubts as to whether the district activities organized by district councils are effective. Uh, we have to count on the district council members to judge uh, the outcome. Sometimes the attendance uh, may be poor. Um, well, I think uh, if there are a large number of activities, say, for example, we may have a performance, like a singing performance, um, it may last for two hours, and then a district councillor um, may uh, be seated there and check whether uh, there is a uh, attendance rate of over 90% throughout. However, an activity may also last for an entire day, so inspection briefly cannot uh, enable the district council member to judge whether it is uh, properly executed. So we need to come up with the rules and guidelines, and maybe the secretary of the district offices uh, can help us to better discharge our duties. Mr. Lam, uh, declaration of interest. Yes, I'm also a district council member. Well, uh, I would also like to declare interest that is, uh, my party may be involved in uh, fundraising in the streets. Yes, I think that has been set out in our report. I think the um, <laughs> The director of all this uh, report has made it clear that is uh, when they looked at the DC's papers, in fact, we have tier one and tier two, tier two declarations. Say, for example, when we first joined the district council, you need to make a declaration. When it comes to tier two, um, sometimes um, you have this scenario that is the declaration. It's only made at the tier two stage rather than at the outset tier one. Uh, this is undesirable. This is because district councils have been tasked to come up with their own standing orders. But then we are public figures, we're spending public money, and we need to follow rules. And then irrespective of the district council and irrespective of the decision maker, uh, we should follow the rules. Now in our report, we are saying that the HAD and the HAB under Mr. Lau Kong Hua should take a serious uh, look and they should consider making recommendations to the district councils and try to unify the uh, arrangements for declaration of interest so that no one uh, will breach the requirement unknowingly. Uh, as Mr. Xiu has said, I don't think they try deliberately uh, to do something. It's also always um, a matter of omission. 
um, of decoration. But then uh, I think uh, there is a need to monitor the case, and we have tried to uh, remind the bureau and the department to take uh, care of this matter. Any other questions? Yes. On, on the Home Affairs Bureau to expedite the follow-up on the Law Reform Commission's recommendations. But of course, that might take an, an, another few years because it's still in the consultation process. So for now, what can be done to better monitor and regulate the charities? And the second question is regarding the community involvement activities. It seems like the DCs are pretty free to do whatever they want with the money with very little evaluation. So uh, again, what is your recommendation? What needs to be done? Thank you. The, the recommendation is included in our report. Um, while we believe that they can have a lot of creativity, but we actually recommend that within the creativity, they must achieve conformity. Conformity to, to transparencies, to good governance, and to their responsibility as public officers. So these are what our recommendation is all about. Because within the uh, district council's ordinance, they do have certain amount of flexibility. But flexibility is not absolute. They must, based on that uh, assumption of principle of transparency, responsibility, and ensure that they are doing the right things to the people that they serve. Yes, Kenneth. Um, I think what you have mentioned about, you know, um, uh, the Home Affairs Bureau will take a few more years to um, implement or, you know, consider the Law Reform Commission's report. I, I, I think, you know, it has already taken a few years. And, of course, one of the recommendations of the report here is to expedite the process. But in order to answer your question, I, I think one, uh, you know, um, one thing which the government could do, and which uh, I think uh, uh, Tanya Chan has already identified, is, um, for example, the Inland Revenue, it doesn't uh, have the power at the moment under Section 88 of the Inland Revenue Ordinance to delist any uh, charitable organizations which has been granted um, uh, exemption status from, from, from the tax. And I think it's just a matter of you know minor amendment to the section to enable uh, the Inland Revenue uh, Department to do so. Of course, we need to do it very carefully and to just to restrict um, uh, its power. But it can be done within you know less than a, a few years. I mean, it can be done. Well, whether it is IRD or or not, we have not made any recommendation. So what we recommend that if within the existing legislation. IRD must consult FSTB and DOJ regarding any matters that they have seen or have witnessed or have seen that there are some tax evasion problem there, tax avoidance, whatever it is. So basically, we have asked the government to look into this matter thoroughly. That's one aspect. Huh? Um, oh, by the way, regarding um, the we, – we have a system – just sorry, I do have a system called – Clearance sheet. Clearance sheet means that uh, that any cases reported in council, uh, and then the government reply to us means doesn't means that the case is closed. We follow up with all the recommendations that we made in our um, report until we are pleased. Then the case is closed. So we do, like now, we still have quite a number of cases which are yet to be opened. To, uh, yet to be closed, like the civil aviation issues, the small house policy issues, to, just to name, just a, huh? yeah. so, so we do have quite a number of uh, cases on our plates. Thank you. Yes, I think that's a very uh, efficient way to at least to scrutinize whether the government has taken any action regarding our recommendations. But uh, for the Law Reform Commission, I do believe that uh, it's time for HAB to take action. And we are not talking about uh, having a new policy right away, but at least uh, I do believe that the HAB at least should um, uh, conclude or at least to uh, get uh, to make a conclusion regarding uh, the uh, suggestion made by the uh, made by the law reform commission and to get the uh, responses from different bureau and departments and to consolidate such a report and to submit it to the government and to the public but without without this report 
uh, there is no way to go forward, to move forward. So uh, this is the duty and the obligation of uh, the HAB uh, uh, to do as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have anything that you don't understand, you're welcome to go after Kenneth, Kenya, Mr. Ho and Mr. Lam. And of course, Paul Chair and Mr. Xu. All of us can uh, answer your questions, but it's better to direct your questions directly to those that I have named. If they can't, I'm more than happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you.